Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you. We got Miss Teresa on the camera hanging out, always doing a perfect job. We got Annie. She thinks she's freezing, so I covered her up with some shop towels. Mm -hmm. She's very comfortable now that way. She stays warm. She's exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but hey, we're really excited too. We got Marlin's uh, C10 truck done, 77 model, put a brand new motor in it, took the three speed out, put an overdrive in it, put 373 gears with all new bearings. Let me tell you guys, totally different truck. Fun to drive, brings back a lot of memories, let me tell you, back in the good old days. Annie, what are you doing? Are you gonna escape on us? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it turned out really nice. They're gonna be actually be coming and getting it this morning. They're flying in at 11 o'clock to pick it up, so we're really excited to take them on a cruise with it and hang out with them for a few days. Gonna be really exciting, huh, Teresa? Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, we got the Tabor brothers. That's His him. name is Chris. Chris. The, I know him by the brothers because there's a bunch of them. Yeah, there's a bunch there's of them. There's a bunch of them. But anyway, we got a 47 uh, Dodge Diesel tranny here. Uh, these guys are awesome. They love putting these Dodge Diesels in Chevrolet vehicles. <laughs> I don't know what it is about them. They've built a couple of really nice pickups uh, with 12 valve Cummins in them. And uh, this one here is actually going in a Suburban with a 12 valve Cummins that he's putting together. So it's going to be really nice. Uh, we've got our B&I heavy duty 592 uh, converter sitting over there, ready to go in. Now we just went with a single clutch because he's not going to really beef it up where we need to put a triple disc in it. But anytime you go to the uh, billet converter, uh, you get a different lug pattern, different mountings. You don't have the lugs that break off where the welds crack and stuff like that. So a big upgrade, even if it's a single billet, it's a, still a, a very big upgrade. Annie's uh, needy this morning. You gonna hang out with us? Huh? Are you? You're such a pretty girl. Yeah, she'll be running. She'll be running once I hit the old air, let me tell you. Right. But we're also excited. We got uh, some parts that come in. Uh, we've been waiting on for the 4L80 that uh, on the turbo truck. Uh, Transspecialty, uh, Chris over there. We just got our uh, billet main shaft. Right here, 4L80, 300M main shaft. Now remember, anytime you buy parts for a 4L80E, you got to be really careful, especially when it comes to shafts and stuff like that, because uh, the way the lube circuit works on this unit. If you notice, uh, this shaft is solid. There's no holes in it anywhere, because all the oil, uh, my, there it is, remember, goes through the bushings on the outsides of the shaft. Like that, so the oil is going to travel on the outside, go through the bushings, and go on further forward to lubricate everything forward. But I, this is the original shaft; it's solid too. See, no holes. But when you come in here and you grab an early design 400 or early 4L80E, where the cooler lines are both up front, the shaft's hollow. Oil goes through the shafts, come out these holes, to lubricate the bushings and stuff like that. Pretty neat. Yep. So you definitely don't want to get these mixed up. You could be in big, big trouble. And they will retrofit. That's what's the problem. So you really want to know what you're doing in that area right well, this there. This looks so. like it's ready to go back together. It's just about there. But guys, I want to show you something too. A customer uh, sent me. It's actually some good friends. Lisa and, and Marlon Marlin. sent me. Uh, this yeah. right here. This is the wiring diagram to my 80 model Chevy pickup out back uh, that we have that we're never going to get rid of. But you can look here, classic car wiring com. This was like 28 bucks for a complete colored laminated wiring diagram. Well, heck, I thought that was for his truck. I didn't know that was for ours. No, I, that's for ours. His is a 77 model. Well, I know. I got confused. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what that was for. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you can hook them together, how they kind of go together. Yeah. This here's all the engine compartment, headlights, stuff like that fuse box you get in here this is stuff under the dash and this here is all your tail lights and everything in the back yeah. then you got your dash of schematics right here different with dashes yeah. depending on what year and stuff but it still gives you what they go to they're numbered so well, pretty neat uh, yeah that's pretty cool yeah so if you if you ever need any wiring harness go check them out because it's really worth that uh they really got nice stuff well annie i'm going to step on you if you don't move <laughs> you're like right in the way right in the way Right in the way. You need to go lay in Come your here. bed. Come here. Come here. Get in go your on. bed. Go get in your bed. <laughs> You're such a pretty girl. 
We're gonna get this apart. We're gonna take yeah. the speed sensor out first. One inch or inch. I'm not sure if this unit has been rebuilt before. Looks like it's been in the mud. Definitely. A lot of times these are uh, get a lot of trash on the end of them, end of them right here. Some of these are yellow colored, uh, kind of clear, and uh, the fluid will get on the inside and turn them pink on the inside. So if you get one and you take it out and it's pink on the inside, uh, then you need to replace it because it's getting fluid on the inside of the sensor. I have to give him a break. You didn't get his bacon this morning, did you? Richard? No, I had to eat a bowl of cereal. Yeah, she, I forgot to put she forgot some to... in the refrigerator, so it was frozen. <laughs> it was, but I'm a bacon guy. I know you are. I'm sure any of his nerves do. Yeah, but if you, let's go right here. I'm going to get okay. going. Sorry. Don't want this video too long. But anyways, this is our connector right here for our governor pressure sensor solenoids, uh, shift solenoid uh, and lockup solenoid, your overdrive solenoid. These are 90% time full of fluid. You get a tranny being erratic as ever. You can pull your uh, connector loose, put some carbon in there, blow it out with air, blow your connector out, and plug it back in, because this is a big problem. These trannies have bad uh, converter drain backs if they set for multiple you know, days, weeks at a time, and the tranny fluid will come up really high, and it physically gets in the connector. So that's a, something you always want to check if you got something being erratic. This little spring right here, it's your TV cable. When you give it gas, it pulls it back, raises uh, pressure for your shifts, and also delays your shifts. TV pressure. This has to be hooked up. This uh, your shifter linkage comes over here with a bracket, has a little hole in it, and this hooks on it right there. Okay. This has to be on there. If this is uh, if you let off the gas and this stayed forward a little bit, it had harsh down shifts erratic shift so this has to be pulled back every time you let off the gas you come to a stop by this spring i've had people come in and they're back here like this holding it back that is not how you do it it has to be pulled forward i always like to set my cable uh, have teresa get in the vehicle put the vehicle on the floor uh, push this all the way back and uh, if your cable needs to be if it goes forward or if the cable is trying to pop on forward, you want to adjust it where it pops on perfectly straight up. Let off the gas, it comes back. Have Teresa put it on the floor, stick it on there. If it's forward, you need to bend the bracket or move the cable back where it sits perfectly on there and let it go back. Pretty simple. I want to make sure they understood that. She's right, behind me. right under your legs. Yeah. Like we have our shifter bracket here. These things are really bad about uh, hard to get out of park. They got wear problems on the inside uh, where the TV, or not the TV, but the detent uh, linkage is. A lot of people break the cables trying to get them out of park. Socket, but I guess I did. We have our band adjustment nut and screw right here, anchor, call it. I could have swore that was a 13. Maybe it's a three quarters. I'm sorry. When you adjust your band, uh, you want to look at your instructions in your kit, your Transgo, or excuse me, Transstar uh, overhaul kit instructions will have it in there. Your Transgo uh, kit could have it in there. So multiple places you can read up on how to set the band. Basically screw that in all the way till it stops uh, to so many foot pounds and then back it out about I think two and seven eighths. Tighten your jam nut down. A little bit of air. Getting a 
leak in this connector right here for some reason. I always like to come in here and just give this little bracket here just a little tap on the side. Kind of loosen that screw up a little bit. That way you don't twist your torque socket off. A lot of times they seize in there or they're even loctited in there. See the sealant on there? And see that torque socket is so tiny it'll just break it right off. Some of these screws before I started the video, save a little time. So it actually looks really nice in this, doesn't it? He don't know anything about it. So we're just gonna do our magic on it and be done with it. Looks like it's got a temperature sensor stuck in here right there. So we got a little switch. Basically, this is our overdrive setup here in the back. We build these separately. We build this unit first, and we build this unit, and then we put them together. This unit, uh, a lot of places to set the clearances and stuff like that on. A lot of places. And then when we put the uh, <clears throat> overdrive case saver in there, this sets down in here. There's a snap ring down in here. You can see that snap ring and the bearing. Well, this will go down in there but on the back side of that snap ring. Let me see if I can get my flashlight to work. I've been having problems with that dang thing. Being... There you go. Oopsie. Fixing to throw that in the trash can. You can see there how that snap ring is wore right there a little bit. Backwards. Well, that's going to take up that. This is going to take up that slack and push everything back forward. And let that snap ring push on this right here, the bearing. Excuse me, not the snap ring, but the bearing. Okay. Now, anytime I put these in, a lot of times I have to shave these down right here a little bit. That way this sets flat. You don't want to shave them off because you do not want this spinning in the case. Just a little bit so it sets flat. Now, you got to remember too, uh, anytime you put one of these in there, it's going to take and move everything forward in this unit. So you're probably going to have to put a, a thinner uh, washer behind the pump stator. Uh, to take out uh, to give it some more clearance because this will lift it uh, pretty far <clears throat> we have our little wire looking snap ring here doesn't do anything basically but just keeps the clutches uh, back here so when you put it together they don't fall out just like that and then here we have our overdrive clutch here got five of them in there you can buy a special backing plate uh, that the fingers are shaved down here and lets it set deeper down in there. You do leave uh, a snap ring out down in here. There's two of them. You have a wavy and a uh, flat snap ring. Always lighten the snap ring right here. I always like to see how they have the opening out here in this big old area here. This piece here could break off. You know, right here. Next thing you know, it gets jammed down in there. I always like to put them over here. Put the tip underneath that. Like that. Okay. Now you, this is the wavy snap ring here. 
and then you have a flat snap ring down in here. You see they put the opening down on this side instead of over here on the flat one. But anytime you update this to the uh, plate that you're going to add an extra clutch, you're, you're going to leave the wavy out and you're only going to use the flat one. That'll let it set down in there far enough to add another clutch and steel. Now I have found out though, uh, the ones that have the diesels that have the tow haul button, uh, if you have it in tow haul and you do that modification, I've seen harsh downshifts. So you just want to remember if you have that problem, you created it. Here's that snap ring I was talking about. Grab it, get it out of there. Right there. You can, that's kind of how that's a magnet. So it catches everything. But you can see here, them two fingers have to set down in here like that. Okay. A lot of times the fingers are too long and it keeps the snap ring from going into the groove. So you have to shave it off to make sure it sets down in there flat, okay? You also want to look at this snap ring here. They're bad about wearing. See that wear right there? Mm -hmm. And then you flip it over, you'll see the wear there too. Mm -hmm. Not much on this side, but you see it there. So, pretty interesting. Also too, I might be saying that a lot also too, but any, <laughs> and, but and anyway, but anyway, anyway, it's just, it's just common stuff, but any, <laughs> you're gonna, okay. Uh, when you're, you have a gas overdrive housing and a diesel overdrive housing, the diesel overdrive housing, uh, pin diameter on your parking pole is larger and the parking pole is different for the angle for it to release park with a heavy trailer on it. So you have to remember that if you put a gas overdrive housing on a diesel, you're going to struggle getting it out of park because there's just, this is totally designed different. This piece right here is designed different. Uh, you put a Dodge diesel with a 40 foot trailer and six cars on the back of it, put it in park on a hill, try to pull that out. And what you're doing is you're moving this lever right here. There's going to be so much weight force on that, uh, anchor lever right there you, you can't get it out of park you can't actually i have one donut tree <laughs> yeah, yeah, i've never changed it over yet because i put a gas one in my dually mm -hmm. okay of course you have your uh, direct clutches here down in here i'm not going to take this apart you have this bearing here you always want to uh, replace it these are bad about uh, causing a noise and overdrive this bearing doesn't wear so much in the center. It wears on the back side of the bearing. So it might roll smooth here, but if you pick it up and put some force this way, you could get a growl because that spring inside uh, is, is pushing against this bearing that direction. That's why you see wear in the case. So, but there is a piece in here though that we do change it, uh, every one of them. Of course, the overdrive sun gear and the forward sun gear. But we call this a bearing backing plate kit. This piece is in here. The spring, 800 pound spring, sets on this race right here and you have the bearing. They're really bad about wearing in here. And they'll only wear on one side from here to here. And I mean, they will really rut. And next thing you know, that spring's sitting in there crooked and this does not want to move right. You can see that's smooth all the way around on the new one, but like I'm telling you, halfway around, this thing will be eight plumb up, and this side here will never be touched. So that's why we replace every one of those bearing two. So, mm -hmm. but you have to put this in a press to get it apart. It takes a special little tool I have over here. Set it on here, put it in a press. Take this snap ring right here out. Get the clutch out, and then we'll take and put this other piece that the spring is in in the press with this same tool and there's another snap ring down in here okay and we have our piston here for overdrive a little short lip seal here 
lip seal here. If you notice here, people ask me, well, which way does the lip seal go? <clears throat> if you notice, <clears throat> this part here is high, this part here is lower, so the seal is going to lay over into the short side. Okay. It's always going to lay over into the short side. It can't lay over on that side. Yeah. Same way with this. If you notice, this is taller, this is shorter. Mm -hmm. The seal is going to lay over into the short side. That way you don't get it mixed up. <clears throat> I think that there's something in that. It's not water? No, it's like, it's clumpy white stuff. It, that's going to be gross. Yeah, I was looking for my... I knew there was something coming out of that. that yeah. The thing's probably been sitting in a field or something. Or outside his, his shop. There's no telling. Got a little rust through here. See? They don't usually leave their stuff out. Actually, he's the guy... A gentleman that I got my four uh, 700s and slash four L60s in the other day. Mm -hmm. Helped us out a bunch. Let me turn this fan on oh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to be able to feel that. Oh, my goodness. That water in here is really sour. <laughs> really nice smell. Come over here, Teresa. <laughs> Got to get in on the action. Heck no. Yeah, this water is really spoiled. Oh. Filter's plumb, plugged up. You know, it doesn't smell burnt, it's just the water's sour. Of course, we have our governor pressure sensor here, solenoid, and we have our overdrive and our lockup solenoids. Uh, they do make a different design. They make an early and a late here, depending on what year you have. plug on this one here is flat. This is the earlier style. These work really good. These fail a lot less than the uh, later versions. A lot less. She's kind of ripe, huh, Teresa? Yep. Of course, we have our accumulator here. This could have a shift kit of something in it because if you look here, we've got a plug, or not a plug, it's a restrictor that they put in there. Shift kit spring, this is a totally different spring uh, than, than factory. So it's got some type of modifications done to it. Have our band strut. We have another one right here. This is what you see come the adjuster comes in to the side of the case. Like that. And you have your servo that applies the band. Of course you have your reverse band here. Big old double wrap here, really nice. The earlier design is just a single wrap. If 
we ever do, we have a river here, and uh, anytime we do one of these, it's going to be in the mud or be submerged under water or something. We'll c come in here and plug this vent hole up right here, and then we'll physically put a hole in the top of the case and run a new vent up, and then run a line all the way up to the brake booster uh, and and put a vent cap up there. That way, no water can physically get inside this unit through the vent hole right here. Of course, it's been apart. Got a little silicone all the way around the pump o-ring there. We have been busy around here. <laughs> See, all these washers here are selective. This is the one I was telling you about when we put our uh, overdrive case saver in the back here it will move everything forward and this washer here is the one you probably could have to change uh, go a little thinner because it is definitely going to lift everything up They make multiple gear sizes here on, from gas to diesel. You want to make sure that you have the right ones when you put them in there. You don't want to put a gas pump behind a diesel. Uh, they will not carry enough fluid, uh, pressure, or volume uh, to support it. So, you notice here we have our dimpled pump bushing. Now it's dimpled, carries a lot more oil, keeps that bushing lubricated a lot better. I look anywhere for anywhere. Always want to stake these bushings in too, right here. I put the bushing in flat with a flat driver, flush. I stake it, and then I go with a bushing driver that goes inside the bushing and slowly pull it in into the stake a little bit. Then I put it on my converter and kind of and tap it a little bit to kind of make sure there's nothing sticking up right here where I staked it. Okay. Stator bushing here you want to replace. Just remember, depending on what year you have, uh, depending on what size this bushing is right here. You see down here where the ceiling rings run for your input shaft right there? Yeah. It's got uh, aftermarket uh, rings on the stator to apply the high gear clutch. Normally they'd be st a stainless metal ring. Also you have to remember this unit here is really bad about uh, if you don't get it set up right. See how this chamfer right here? See where that ring's been running? See how close that ring is to that chamfer right there? So that tells me that that ring right there is on the verge of being blown out right here because of that chamfer. It, it's on, you can't get it any closer to the edge without causing damage to that ring, that outer ring. That's what I was telling you. When you go to a thinner washer here, it's going to shove that drum farther up this way, and it's going to put that ring farther down here. Okay? But you also, you got to look here. This is a ply port to apply the clutch with this drum. Look how close that ring is to that groove right there. So when you t put this thinner washer in here, it's going to move that, gr that marking farther in here, and it's going to take that one and move it here because you're going to move that drum farther and get that away from there. That, this is on the verge of uh, not being set up right or just we have wear in places. Case, uh, this wear back here will cause everything to move back. You know, just multiple areas. That's what I was telling you. It's really critical in setting these things up right here. And another thing, I too, uh, when this drum is set... Come over here, Trace, I'll show you. When this drum is sitting down in here, like that, see how deep that is? Well, a lot of times you put them together, they're way out here like this. See that? And it'll wear this right here off the nub off of it right here. And next thing you know, that's trying to shove the drums apart and knock the washers out, the thrust washers out. So when you set it up, you want to make sure 
you get this drum as deep as possible in there if I can get it back in there. Come on. As deep as possible. You'll never get it like that. I don't care who you are. You'll never get it like that. You know, it's always going to be down in this area somewhere. So. Which this unit's been out a while, it looks like. This isn't a factory band. This is a three speed 727 band. See that right there? And of course, that's what we'll put in them too. See, 727. That's a three speed band, which, if you notice, we have another new one sitting right over here. You just get a lot more material uh, on connect, uh, putting onto the drum. Uh, grabs a lot better where the factory one does not. A lot less material. And you have your forward sealing rings right here. Here's another selective washer here. How thin that one is, see how thick that one is. Also, what I do with it? I know it fell somewhere. Oh, here it is. This three tab washer right here is selective too. They make three different thicknesses. And that sets down in here in your forward drum. Three tabs. So, multiple areas to set the clearance up on this unit right here. Got a four clutch forward. A lot of people say, well, can we put a five clutch in there? You can. You just have to work it a little bit. But four clutches on, on one of these units will hold a ton of power. Now you can see here how they're kind of burned up there. but. Looks like to me this unit could have been run low on fluid a little bit. Forward clutch ain't going to be burn up uh, because of the TV. It's going to be burn up because of something else. Then you have this little plastic spacer here. It's a ring. They do make them in steel. A lot of the early 727s had them in steel. If you could find a steel one, put it back in there. And you have your bevel. They make a couple of different ones of these. You have your forward clutch piston. This has got a Transco kit in it, I believe is what it's got in it. Um, just because this ring right here is, isn't factory neither. This normally would be a white metal ring. This has got a high pressure green sealing ring in it. Same way with your forward seal or your forward forward seals, you have a tall and a low side. Just remember, it's always going to fold over into the low. Same way with your forward. Of course, we have our high clutch here. Got a four clutch. We can definitely add one more clutch to this unit here. And uh, how we do it is. Uh, We'll put these clutches all back in here. We'll take this forward plate right here. I'll kind of show you real quick. Uh, I had a guy text me the other day on he was having issues with one. So we're going to add another clutch and steel. It's going to get five in there. And then we're going to take the forward apply uh, backing plate that was in the forward drum. Remember that? We're going to take and stick that in there okay but the problem we have now is this plate sticks up so high that it's going to rub right here it's going to rub look at that you can hear it rubbing right now but if you take this plate right here and you take this down about i'm going to say an eighth of an inch off right here put that back in there Okay, just remember to use a 350k snap ring because these are too wide. Once you put this in there, you can't get it in there. Okay, uh, cut that down. When you get it all put together, your forward drum, everything put back together, you have to stack it. Get this out of the way. This ain't together, but you're going to stack all this back together. You're going to put your forward drum, you're going to put all this back together. And then you're going to take, and you're going to air check it through the pump, and you're going to apply this clutch. With this all stacked together, 
everything together, I mean complete, and when you air check that third gear drum, it cannot lift up on the forward drum. It better not move it. Okay, if it does, then that means that plate's going to rub this drum again. So you need to take a little bit more off of here. Take plenty. I like to take it to where I can rock it and know I have clearance between that drum like this. Air check it. This doesn't move. You're good to go. You got plenty of clearance between the plate and the drum here. Then you got it. You just added an extra clutch. Real simple. Just take your time. Just remember you have to stack it up and air check it and make sure it does not lift that drum. Whether it's a 727, one of these, or a C6, because I add clutches to the C6 the identical way. Stack it up and, and make it that way because the, the gentleman that was contacted me, uh, he was building a C6 and he had problems uh, with it. So, anyway. Of course, we have our intermediate shaft here I want to thank uh, Kevin for the snap ring pliers worked really nice mm -hmm. got it off it got it off. off we have our five pinion steel forward planet I want to make sure none of the pins are purple any pitting wobbling of the gears or anything like that very seldom ever seen anything go wrong with those, uh, but it does happen. You do have a plastic little, uh, looks like a bushing that sets in here. There's no bushing in here. Put your thrust washer back down on here. I'll take that off first, put this on there. Just like that. And put it on there. See, no bushing. That keeps these two pieces from rubbing. That plastic in this washer. Kind of crazy how they do things nowadays. Of course you have your washer. It sets down in here. This washer never goes out. I don't even think it ever touches anything. Always looks brand new when you take it out. You got your bushings for your sun gear on both ends. You notice a narrow one there, a real wide one here. If you buy a bushing kit, you're going to be putting a narrow one back in here and a narrow one back in here. We always buy the, the new sun gears because these are always wore out. You can look through here on the teeth. I, I mean, can you see how bad that looks? Just really pitted looking. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to tell. But we clean these up and look at it, make sure there's no pitting or anything. If there are, we chunk them, get rid of them, put a new one in. Same way in the overdrive section, the overdrive sun gear. Actually, let me, I think I got one out here and show you what they look like. <clears throat> this is your forward sun gear here that's inside this shell. They do make two different thicknesses of shells. So uh, when you order your sun gear, they make a thick and a thin area through here to compromise for the thicker thin shell. So if you got a thick shell and a thin gear, you ain't going to get your snap ring in. Or if you got a thin shell and a thick, it's going to wobble like crazy. So you want to make sure you get the right sun gears. But this is where they wear out really bad on the teeth. So this is a brand new one. Now this here is our overdrive sun gear here, totally different looking. Remember, here's our bearing backing plate kit. I was talking about, let me get this off here since I have one sitting there. Let me get that off. Must be pretty worn. Normally this would just fall right off. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you on the last one, but I couldn't take it. I didn't take it apart. 
See the wear here? Mm -hmm. How much wear that gets in there? Like I said, a lot of places you can't see anywhere, but normally they wear on one side, and then that, this cocks and the spring sets on here, so I just wanted to show you that. Same way with the overdrive sun gear, you wanna look here. They make different pitches uh, on this gear right here in the planetary, so you wanna make sure you get the right one because uh, the farther they lay it over, the quieter, the more they stand it up, the noisier the overdrive will be. So. All the straight cut ones, because they did make some early models that were straight cut, they did uh, have a slight wine on them, or wine in them when they went to overdrive. We have a aluminum planet in the back, which is normal on some of these. You can do some upgrading and put steel back here, but it does take somebody to know what they're doing to do it. If you notice here, we have a thrust washer here, we have no thrush washer here. The planetary itself is the thrush washer. We have this plate right here. When it's in the ring gear and on the shaft, it does not spin, it's stationary. Then the planet spins on this race right here and the planet is the thrush washer. So, you can always flip them over too if it looks decent. Use it again, set it down in here. Put it all together. Just make sure there's no wear on your uh, ring gear teeth there. And you want to definitely look here for wear because this is going to be a common problem right here for wear. Right here. You'll get a, it'll wear so far down, you'll get a lip right here sticking up where you can grab it. You can see the metal has been in already embedded in it right there in places. So you definitely want to put a new planet in here. You can upgrade this though, or Transtar, you can get a five pinion and sometimes I even believe aluminum six pinion. To upgrade it so you never put aluminum in a forward planet on a diesel some of the early early ones they had them but that's only when they only made like 125 horsepower or something so you just want to remember that it's your intermediate shaft this is another spacer right here that is selective this piece right here they'll be they're color coded they're either yellow blue red uh, no no color at all depending on what thickness it is. Have our big old reverse band. You can see here where it's already starting to flake off. They'll go uh, to metal to metal on the tips first and then start uh, wearing on this drum right here. If you buy a washer kit, this will come brass instead of plastic. Plastic's okay too. You wanna look in here really good. This is where all the trash goes first and hits and usually wipes this drum out if you get a converter failure. Uh, your rear cooler line oil comes in here. The rear cooler line comes in here and goes through this case support back here and squirts on this first to cool this off right here. And so if you get any trash going through the system, that's where it's gonna get embedded first. Get your sprag assembly here. A roller clutch. Just remember, the spring always pushes the roller uphill. Just remember that. This little pin right here, this is the anchor for your reverse band. If you see right here, Teresa, this pin sets right in here. Let me put it back in. And you see that sets right in there. If you take your hand and you take and go and shove that pin out like that, those, that edge right there and right here I is... I guess I have to see on the inside. Can you see that? Yeah. That like edge that. right there and that edge right there will slice your finger. That is sharper than a razor blade right there. So if you stick your finger in there to shove that pin out right here, you can slice the tip of your finger right up. So just remember that.
Now these are 3 H bolts right here. They're kind of gold looking in color. It's the only one like that in the whole unit. Of course you got your case right, support right here. If you notice on this case support, there's no holes right here for the governor tubes. If you have a three wire early style that doesn't have these sensors right here, that doesn't have these, there's gonna be holes right there, like on this new support right here that are gonna be installing. Your governor tubes are gonna go here. You're, you're gonna have a, a governor on your output shaft or your intermediate shaft right there. Actually, it's gonna be on the output shaft. And then uh, if you do, if you got the solenoids, then you're gonna take these little plugs right here and you're gonna plug these holes like this is. Oh, sorry. I hit the camera with my hand. Oh, okay. But like that. But early style, don't plug the holes. Late version that has the solenoids, you plug the holes. Plus you have an O-ring that goes on here that seals it to the case keeps the pressure built up in here, lubricates it a lot better. Because right through here is where you're gonna see that wear at from that drum. You look here, okay, you start seeing wear. Shiny. We always enlarge this hole right here a little bit to put more oil on this area right here. So that's where it happens. As you can see here, cooler line oil comes right through here. See, and it goes all through here, lubricates this first before it goes anywhere else. So it really needs some, both those pieces have to be replaced for sure. Uh, of course, we have our intermediate servo here that applies the band. And there could be a shift kit spring in here. Sometimes there's, they put them in there. Kind of slow it down a little bit. Uh oh, Tracy. That's one thing my left arm will not do yet is plug an air blower in. Just can't use it at that angle yet. This is a shift kit spring here. It is painted white in color, of course. There we go. Right here. And there's also down in here, you can take this out. There we go. Gonna have a spring, another little o ring right here, a little washer like that. A lot of the shift kits will have a spacer that goes down in there and uh, elim el eliminates this cushion part of the servo. There's a little tiny hole right there, see that hole? That's a cushion hole, so this moves in and out. It's kind of like, a, kind of like an accumulator, but it's in this here, it softens the shift. They'll take and drop a, a plug down in there and, we're, and you'll barely get this, the spring and stuff back in, it makes it solid where this doesn't move anymore. If this was full of fluid. Ooh, that's not fluid, that's water. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to see if I can fill it up real quick. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. When I put this in there, watch this. See? See that coming out? It's got trash in it, see right there? That's how that works. So a lot of people don't even know that's in there. And they mess with it. Of course, you have your reverse servo here, too. They usually don't do anything to this on the shift kit parts. You can buy an aftermarket piston or something like that. Now, they did change the diameter of this piston. Uh, when you went to a narrow band, a single wrap, the piston's going to be bigger. When they went to the double wrap band, uh, they went to a smaller piston here, servo piston. So they never mess with the springs or anything that I can think of. So, of course they did have a temperature switch here. It's better to be in the pan, but I mean, you won't really get an accurate reading here. The hottest oil coming out of the tranny is your cooler line oil coming 
uh, out of the transmission. Uh, so if you can put your sensor and your cooler line going to your cooler, that's going to be your hottest temperature right there. Uh, valve body. Look at this thing real quick. I just love this stuff. All that dirt. All this stuff will be hand cleaned. Very little goes in the parts washer here. Everything is hand cleaned. The case, the housing, the pan. Pretty much that it. That's it. Everything else will be hand cleaned. This is your detent or for your shifter. This is where we get wear through here. If you well, if you would have been able to see it if I didn't jerk the ball out of there. But this ball right here starts wa working side to side right here and makes this whole oblong. Okay? They make they have a bullet that sets in there that's about that long that uses the whole bore of that area right there. And also, this area right here, we take and we clean this area up right here a little bit because this ramp right here gets wore and the ball can't climb it. It locks it down right in here. So we'll try to clean this up right here and make this kind of round a little bit. That way it moves really smooth. Of course, you have your shifters or TV linkage seal right here on the top. It does go in a certain direction. So actually, yep, you got to be careful how they put it in. So it goes down just like that. Don't worry. Hopefully my camera's got enough time. Your shift kit will also come with a, a, a bracket here. Normally this, will, uh, this is the factory color, but the shift kit will be a bright gold like this. The bracket will be. They're bad about breaking, causing lockup failure and stuff. So. Amazing how nasty these things get. Now also, set it again, also, your shift kit will come with a plate right here where normally you just have a gasket. Your shift kit comes with a plate. Yeah, this train is pretty wore out. Now, if this unit was, if this was good, not leaking, and uh, your overhaul kit will come with a new gasket right here. If you notice, there's screens on these gas on that gasket that keeps the filter clean or the solenoids clean, so you can clean that off. Put a new filter or gasket on there that's got the screens. This is our overdrive accumulator here. There's going to be a modification here you do, depending on what kit you have, uh, how they do the modifications here. Some of them they just put uh, the spring in there and then they drill a hole through here. Comes out that back side right there. See that little hole? That's an added hole. So this is a Transgo kit. Got three springs for the accumulator. Normally there'll just be one. Always want to change your seals here. And these are different sizes, so you want to make sure you put the right one on, on the right end. We do have a aftermarket manual valve. Kind of looks like a Sonex, could be. Or Hard to say, they look identical, a lot of them. Now we are updating the uh, PR valve on this to a Sonex full-time lube, for 
sure. We'll look and see if it's got one in it first. I have learned on these uh, 48s and 47s and stuff that a lot of times uh, you better make sure you put a pressure gauge on these things when you put a shift kit PR spring in them. Okay, because these things are bad about cross leaks, stuff like that, when you start bumping the pressure up on them. You see how dirty that is? Just all the trash. You have these little tiny holes right here. When you clean this up, you can see a hole there. You can see a hole there. And there's another one down in here. You want to make dang sure that those three holes right there are perfectly clean. There's a lot to a valve body. If you notice here, we have a tiny check ball here. If you notice here, we have a dual holes for it. Special check ball, take and put it where you put all your things you don't want to forget. <laughs> uh, if you can look here, I was right, it is a transgo kit. Let's see right there. Mm -hmm. Comes with a separator plate. Let me tell you guys, on these separator plates, you're going to be drilling holes. You're going to be. This is your third gear clutch feed. This one here, it, you can drill this one as big as you want. If you don't drill this one, you didn't change nothing. You have to enlarge both of them. This is your second gear right here. Okay, remember that. But these plates, you remember, they're stamped out. So when you get this out real quick. When you put this plate on, this plate is smooth on this side, but the way they stamped it out, this side's rough. You can feel every little spot in it with your glove. This side's smooth. So what I do is I take Scotch-Brite, and I set it down in my washer, and I Scotch-Brite all this off. And I get this just as smooth as you can get it all the way on both sides even. Clean it really good. These things are really bad about, if you look here, it's really hard to see it, but the pressure regulator valve is right here, okay? When you put that bigger spring in here, you get leaks through here. You'll see this walking through here. This will look, All this stuff will look normal, and all these lands over here. Let me see if I can wipe that off, see if that changes color. Yeah, you can see it right there. You see how that's gray? This is all nice and shiny. That right there tells me that we've been having a fluid leaking underneath here. This plate's been walking right through there. And I see it a lot, especially if you boost, put the, the heavy spring in there and you screw it in just as far as you want to screw it in, you know. Of course, you look here, they do, Transgo does put a different little puck right here instead of a check ball. When you put it on, you want to make sure you stick it through the hole, okay? And of course, you got all your check balls in the troughs. And then this trough here does have a bigger check ball than all the other troughs. This here's this ball here. There's no trough. Trough, 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 trough. Come on, get in there. Okay, now this does have the, the Transgo uh, pressure regulator spring and stuff in here. Got their little washer and their little half moon washer here. Goes on there. I'm going to look and see if anybody drilled the valve body for lube and they did not drill any holes across these lands anywhere here. 
Just got a stock pressure regulator valve. Remember, my gloves are dirty, but I'm not, everything's going to be pretty clean. And this is a Sonex valve that's got a built-in uh, lube circuit in it. It's got a spring and a check ball here. Uh, no more when you start the, the vehicle up in park. It fills the converter, lubes everything. You can check the tranny fluid right off the bat. So this is a must. Yes, sir. It is a must. We do them in every one. Actually, our 4L80E's got one in it too. But it just tells you how good they work. Of course, we're going to have a couple check balls here. Never go back with the metal check balls. Always go back with the neoprene. neoprene. <laughs> the metal one will always beat it out here. So you always want to go back with the ones. Uh, on your TV valve here, if you notice the end of it is beat to death. I think so. See that? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much longer that valve. I'd have to get another valve and stick it up there and see what's, how bad it is. But they're bad about beating them to death. So. You can see here we have this is a this is a new valve it looks like I'm not sure if it's a Sonex valve but you do do the modifications they did go a little far on here on the the chamfer they put that should only be into the middle of the valve instead of almost all the way across the valve that's a little excessive okay so just remember that just read the instructions it tells you of course we have another valve right there I'm trying to get out there it is. Here's the the TV valve, TV spring, right? But look at this valve. Look how much of the coating's missing on the valve. You can see it's starting to get really funny looking here on the edge of the valve. See that? That's what's why you always want to buy a Transgo kit like this because it comes with all the new TV valve, the steel valve, all the updates and stuff that you can put in this valve body because we're just seeing them come in with such high mileage on them and, and, and wear that it takes that kit to physically uh, put them back into good shape. So a lot of the other kits will not come with valves and stuff like this. So it just makes it so much easier to have everything here ready to go when you build the units because man, I hate waiting for parts. It took me a week to get the, the main shaft for that 4L80E and I could already have the training and built and, and been driving it, you know, so. Well, Teresa, you know, we just love you to death. We want to thank you for recording. You stood there about an hour and a half, it seems like. My arms are starting to shake. I can't hold it any <laughs> are they? longer. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No. Well, hey, we did start a store, a clothing, uh, a, a merch store. A merch store. That's what it's called. I couldn't get it through my tongue no, there. No bacon, guys. No bacon. But anyway, we did start a merch store. We just got two things on there. Teresa's learning how to do some things. We got some cool ideas coming, hopefully. But we wanted to just kind of put it on there and see if it worked. Actually, it did work. We got uh, Lisa and uh, Marlon's coming. Actually, got the shirts and the coffee mugs, so we're really excited to see them ourselves. So, yeah. really excited about that. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching and always uh, continue uh, tuning in to watch us and stuff. We really enjoy it. We're having a good time. And uh, unfortunately, don't forget to subscribe, push that old notification <laughs> bell. You know how that goes. But anyway, got more to come. Y'all have a great day.